Welcome to Deploying a Modern Mobile Management Environment with Android Enterprise and Workspace ONE. My name is Jared Kennedy. I'm the APAC Business Development Manager for Android Enterprise. So first, let me introduce our team. We have a team across Asia Pacific and North Asia. I lead the Asia Pacific region covering Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, Indonesia, Thailand, Philippines, Malaysia and India. We have two trainers in our region, Nikki Merchels, who's based in Melbourne, and Andre Owanto, who's based in Singapore. In North Asia, my colleague Ben Sieb leads the team based in Tokyo, covering Japan, Hong Kong, South Korea, and Taiwan. And he's supported by a technical solutions specialist, Takeo Doi, and a trainer, Tomoka Matsui. So it's never been more important to get enterprise mobility right. We have more endpoints. We have more mission critical tasks being performed on a mobile device. We have many more remote workers, particularly during COVID. And as a result, we've got many more security risks for both corporate owned and now an increasing number of bring your own device uh, devices that are coming onto the network. There's many more regulations. Uh, privacy is very important. There are government regulations, uh, all sorts of laws around making sure that your data does not end up in the wrong hands. We have more distributed teams and decentralized computing. 75% of leaders say that enterprise mobility is critical for any customer service and satisfaction. Yet, IDC is stating that only 15% of devices are managed. There are many more devices out there that are lightly managed or completely not managed at all. And there's many workers in your organization that do not have access also. So Android's well placed to address this requirement. In fact, we are the world's largest uh, mobile device that's been used in enterprise. So for all devices that ship into business, Android actually has 79% of those. So there's a reason for that. So Android has been designed to empower every worker. We can manage every device. We can harden up weak security spots. We can help you stay in compliance and we can support every use case. Android is a very open platform with not just smartphones and not just tablets, but single use devices, rugged devices, kiosks, point of sale and signage. We have an open ecosystem with many manufacturers, not just one. So Android can operate across all industries. Think about field services where you've got people out there servicing uh, hardware or equipment, retail, manufacturing, professional services, hospitality and healthcare. As a result, Android is actually the world's largest operating system platform, not just mobile operating systems, but also all operating systems. We have over 2.5 billion active devices. Google Play is also the world's largest application distribution platform with over 2 million apps. We've also been investing in the enterprise. Those figures before were just about overall consumer and enterprise, but since Android 5 Lollipop version, we've been investing significantly in the enterprise, bringing many new features on every new release of Android. And as you may be aware, earlier this year, we released the beta for Android 11. But things are changing with Android Enterprise. You've had a choice since Android 5 to stay on what we call the legacy device administrator or move to Android Enterprise. As of Android 9, we've actually started to mark that legacy approach device admin as being deprecated. We actually announced this back in 2017 on Android 7. In Android 10, if you've got a device, some of those functions will actually be disabled going forward. And we'll provide a little bit more detail about that now. So we made the announcement in December 2017. And there's a copy of the announcement there in our original blog post you can link to after this uh, presentation. We announced that a number of the APIs in the device admin feature set were going to be deprecated. And then from Android 10, they're going to be removed. We did an update to that blog post earlier this year in 2020, and there's a link to the developer documentation if you'd like to find out more. So what does this mean? Uh, what features have been deprecated? So we're de actually deprecating four key features uh, in Android uh, that can no longer be used on Android 10 and, and beyond. First is passcode policies. Device admin will no longer be able to specify the device passcode quality or expire a password. That's critical for managing your devices. You'll also no longer be able to restrict camera or make changes to the key guard. Key guard is things like the, 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 the passcode to the device and the ability to uh, allow settings to be passed through to the, pass, to, the, to the screen lock. We're also removing, or actually back in Android 7, we actually removed the ability to stop people from removing the device administrator. So for example, if you've got the AirWatch agent or the, now the Workspace ONE agent installed on your device under device admin, someone can remove that, uh, which means the device is no longer under management. 
So why are we doing this? Uh, one of the reasons we're doing this is first up is that from an identity and policy point of view, when you uh, in, enroll in your device for the first time, you require a consumer Gmail account to access Google Play. That introduced a whole range of provisioning issues and privacy challenges. First up, where do you get a Gmail account from? How do you create thousands of Gmail accounts if you need to? How do you prevent those Gmail accounts being used to store personal data on them, which then becomes a privacy challenge uh, when you're working with devices that are owned by the company? There was also limited policy settings. Device admin was never designed to be an EMM. It was there to provide certain access to the platform for software applications, but it's not there for EMM. From a permission point of view, it's also not really secure because any application can request device admitted privileges. Now, if you did that and the application was not the right uh, application that should have those privileges, then the device could be compromised, which opens the attack vectors to malware and ransomware that allow that device to be compromised. The provisioning challenges were also uh, a problem on Android uh, before Android Enterprise came along. Think about deploying thousands of devices. What methods were there to allow you as a corporate administrator to ensure that every one of those devices enrolls with the minimum amount of touch required by your IT admin staff or by a partner? It really came down to vendors, particular OEMs, providing their own tool sets, but that was not available across the whole platform. There was also additional fragmentation because those features that were built in by certain OEMs were not available on other OEM devices. So every model of device, every version of Android had different feature set. It also required a customized agent. Think about the times when you went to the Play Store and you searched for the AirWatch agent and you saw how many different applications were in there for the different versions of Android for the different OEMs. This has all changed with Workspace ONE and Android Enterprise. So how have we solved these problems? We can categorize these problems into three areas. And this is where Android Enterprise resolves all of the challenges of device administration of Android in the past. The first is around management, providing a consistent and powerful and flexible set of management capabilities that don't have some of those problems we've had with Android before. We have a strong application distribution mechanism to make sure that your devices are deployed with the most secure and the most up-to-date versions of, of applications from the Play Store. And we also implement security uh, at a multi-layered approach. So let's have a look at management first. So we have two main modes of Android based on your ownership model. The first is personally owned. So there's personally owned devices and corporate owned. So in a personally owned device, you would like to make sure that IT has limited control of your device. You want to make sure that IT can only view your work apps. You want to know that there's separation between your personal work and your, uh, and your, and your work uh, data. This is what the work profile does. In a corporate owned device, the organization owns the asset. So they have full control of this device. It's provisioned during the out of box setup wizard. And there's three different use cases depending on what level of control that IT admin would like on the device. You can have a work profile similar to what you've got in personally owned, but with some additional controls for the enterprise. You can have fully managed or you can have dedicated. Let's take a little bit uh, a little bit further look at that. So BYO, you can see the level of control is quite light, right? Level of control goes left to right. The stronger the control, we move to the right. So starting with personally enabled, this device is company owned, but it has a work profile added on top. Now we've made some changes at Android 11. You can see a blog post here where we talk about what are we doing to ensure that even though the device is company owned, if there's a work profile on this device, how do we make sure that the IT admins cannot see some of the personal data. So you can read that blog post for more information. You then have a work only device, also known as corporate owned business only, where the device is fully managed, it's locked down by the employer, there is no personal apps, there's no personal accounts. For example, you can't add your Gmail account to this device. Then we can go a step further, we can dedicate this device into a certain function where there may be one or two apps available only, uh, and that device might be, for example, a barcode scanner or a kiosk in a, in, a, in a warehouse. So looking a bit further at the, at the work profile, what does it do? So there's OS level protection. This is native. This is not something we install on top. This is built into Android. So from the base level up, Android is based on what we call SE Linux, security enhanced Linux. Each of those applications operates in its own sandbox. As a result, the applications are protected from one another and the personal apps cannot see the work apps and vice versa. The organization has full control of everything that happens inside the work profile, but not on the personal side. So in the work profile, they can control things like VPN, certificates, uh, a lock screen passcode, etc., and the managed play store. 
the employee can be sure that their personal apps and data are not visible to the IT admin. If the device happens to get wiped, for example, you leave the employer and they send a wipe command. In the old days, if someone sent an exchange uh, wipe command, you would lose everything. In this scenario, only the work data uh, gets removed. There's a clear boundary between work and personal applications. For corporate-owned devices, to resolve the challenge of deployment, we want to make sure that there's multiple ways for you to quickly deploy these devices into the enterprise. This is done from the device out of the box or freshly after a factory reset. In Android 5 or Lollipop, we introduced NFC, where you have a master programming device. You tap on the child device, and it passes settings across and forces the enrollment into Android Enterprise. DPC identifier, device policy controller identifier, also known as an EMM token, is where you type in a special hash command during the setup wizard, and it commences the enrollment. QR code is where you scan a QR code, obviously. And zero touch, we introduced in Android 8, uh, where the device can be provisioned over the air based on its IME number or its serial number. Let's take a closer look at these. So with DPC identifier, this is this came in an Android 6. You connect to Wi-Fi, where, where you have the Google account prompt, where you would normally type in your Gmail account, instead of typing in a Google account, you type in a special command, AFW hash, and then the name of your EMM agent. In this case, with Workspace ONE, the EMM agent is called Hub. That'll then forcibly install the Workspace ONE agent. It downloads the latest version from the Play Store automatically for you. You don't need to package it up or sideload it. You then enter your user credentials and complete the enrollment. With QR code, it's a bit easier. You don't have to type in any commands. Uh, you tap on the welcome screen six times. After that, um, it asks you to connect to Wi-Fi because on Android 7 and 8, the QR code reader was not installed in Android. So it then downloads a QR code reader. And after you scan the QR code, you can then uh, commence enrollment and all the credentials uh, uh, for the Workspace ONE enrollment are included in that QR code. We actually improved that with Android 9. We thought, what a great idea. Why don't we include the QR code reader in Android 9's uh, firmware? So we did. So now you can tap the welcome screen six times. You can see here on the screen as I'm uh, doing the presentation, we've tapped it six times and we straight away can scan the QR code. Within a few seconds, that device has been forced to enroll into Workspace ONE. You can also pass the Wi-Fi configuration details uh, during that QR code to save you typing in all of the SSIDs or the web code. Zero Touch was introduced in Android 8. So you turn the device on, connect to Wi-Fi or LTE, and you get automatic provisioning out of the box. These devices are forcibly enrolled into Android Enterprise. There's no way to get around it. As soon as the device gets connectivity, it must enroll. So what's required for Android Zero Touch enrollment? So because this is happening out of the box, it needs to be on the device. So we made this available to all Android OEMs since Android 8, but it was optional. So you need to check this list here, the compatible devices. There's a link in this presentation. You can check after this uh, after this presentation, download the, the deck from, our, from the, our virtual booth. You can find out which devices are compatible because we have a list on our solution directory. You also need to buy the devices from an authorized reseller. So this covers a frequently asked question. No, if you're a customer, you can't upload your own devices. You must buy those devices. They must be compatible and they must be via an authorized reseller. If your reseller is not signed up, then please ask them to speak to their Google account representative. In the Zero Touch portal, the Zero Touch reseller will then add those uh, add you as a customer and they'll assign you the devices. You can then sign into the same portal under a customer account and then you'll see the uh, devices there. You can create an EMM configuration that simply says, this is the credentials for my uh, the URL for my uh, uh, my Workspace ONE server. You can script any of the additional settings you would like to happen during enrollment, and that can be pushed down to those devices upon enrollment to make it easy for the user to enroll. Inside of the EMM, it's the same as what you're doing before. You have all the same policies, and et cetera, and the profiles that you may have. There's nothing different. All Zero Touch is doing is making sure that device forcibly installs the Workspace ONE agent. And from there, all the normal settings that would normally happen after you type in your credentials begin to occur on the device. So that's management. Let's talk about application distribution and how we can make that easy for you. So a secure, uh, securely managing, configuring, and deploying apps is what can be done with Managed Google Play. You can push any of the public applications. So those 2 million applications are in the Play Store. You can essentially create a whitelist if you like, or you can have the whole Play Store open. Most commonly, organizations set up a whitelist. They only allow device, uh, applications that are uh, permitted for business use. And those applications can be then pushed in terms of being uh, sent silently to the device, or they can be there for a download. And they can also be set to mandatory, so they can't be removed. 
Great thing is we also open up our Google Play Store for private applications. It doesn't cost anything. Uh, in the past, you used to, have to pay $25 to upload an application to the Play Store, and you had to be using G Suite. Now, with any EMM for free, you can go into the Manage Play iframe within the Workspace ONE console, and you can upload your APKs into the Google Play Store and get the benefit from all of our security and global hosting. You can also push down things like manage configurations to make sure that not only is the enrollment into Workspace ONE automated, but the deployment of applications such as Microsoft Exchange uh, are also seamless. Let's cover off security because that's a really important thing when we've got an enterprise uh, environment. Android has really defined, redefined the standards for mobile security. We have multiple layers of security. It's not just the platform, it's hardware, it's the OS, it's Google Play Protect, and it's security management via EMM. Let's have a look at each of those different settings. Starting with the hardware, we want to make sure that the device is trusted to begin with. So every Android device must have a trust zone built in to the main chip on the device. So Qualcomm and Intel, the manufacturers of the ARM chips, have actually got a trust zone which is not penetrable by malware. Inside of that uh, hardware chip is essentially where we keep all, this, all the signed certificates and the encryption keys that are used to protect the device. During boot, that process makes sure that nothing has been compromised because we compare signatures that were taken during manufacture of the device with what is it sees now, and they can actually prevent booting. Certain devices, such as the Google Pixel, have gone a step further, and they've actually separated the hardware chip to a completely separate chip. So it's not the main processor, it's outside. And in, on the Google Pixel, it's called the Titan M. You can click on the link here for more information. We also have a hardened OS platform. So I talked about how the work profile has SE Linux. So essentially, every application on Android is in its own separate sandbox or container. Even if you did manage to compromise a single application, it's going to prevent you from getting access to other applications because they are in their own container. We have many, many different uh, method methodologies built into Android to make sure that uh, we minimize and, and, and reduce the chances of malware getting on the device in the first place, but also should their uh, malware get onto the device that is protected and stopped from getting into other applications. We also run our own anti-malware technology. In fact, Google Play Protect is on every one of our 2.5 billion devices, making us the world's largest malware, uh, anti-malware company. We're always running those uh, scans, either on the device or in our, uh, in our server, and we scan millions and millions of apps every day. We also enforce our uh, policies even further with EMM. So now that you've got uh, EMM policies uh, via, via Workspace ONE, then you can go further and set all sorts of compliance requirements in terms of, hey, did my device get a security update within a certain period? No, I want to isolate that device from my network. Or oh, this device has been compromised, we're going to block it, we're going to remove data, etc. This can all be enforced with Workspace ONE. So here's some statistics. They're pretty impressive from Google Play Protect. 2.5 billion protected devices. We're scanning 100 billion apps every day. And the potentially harmful app, that's what PHA stands for, potentially harmful app, the installation rate of PHAs on an Android enterprise managed device that is only using Google Play for app distribution. So we're not talking about side loading. We're not talking about a device that doesn't have Workspace ONE. The malware rate is 0.004 of 1%. If you're not great at maths like me, think about this. This is four malware installations on 100,000 devices. It's an incredibly low rate. So don't listen to me. I work for Google. How about this? This is Gartner, an independent analyst. They, they rated all the mobile operating system platforms, and they rated uh, Android as having a strong category rating in 26 out of 30 categories. The Google Pixel and the Samsung device also scored very well, and you can see there the results for uh, our next nearest competitor who are not as strong. We've also got industry certification. So the great thing about that is it's not just Gartner doing a, a one-soft report here. This is uh, certifications that have been maintained uh, every time we do an Android update. We are submitting our devices through to the US government uh, who are doing a common criteria assessment. Common criteria is actually accepted by 30 governments worldwide, including Australia. So this uh, Australian Signals Directorate uh, approve for use any, any device that has uh, achieved a common criteria certification, which includes Android and devices like the Pixel and the Samsung devices. We also have certifications such as FIPS 140-2 and a number of other uh, uh, certifications, including ISO. Another important thing with security is getting regular updates. So Google releases an Android update for security every 30 days. 
and manufacturers that use Android One as a platform and the Google Pixel deploy those every 30 days. Other manufacturers uh, uh, that, uh, that are part of the Android Enterprise Recommended Program must do their updates within 90 days. We also provide controls to Workspace ONE via the EMM API to allow those sort of controls to be managed from your EMM console to push, defer, or manage those controls. So if you like what you heard here and you'd like to uh, take this to the next step further with Google or with, uh, with, with VMware, then we're actually going to hold, hold some workshops that you can book in for. We've got three to choose from. You can come to all three if you like. The first one is going to be talking about modern Android management migration planning. So this is going to touch on what I mentioned about the device admin API going away. So if you've got a current fleet of Android devices and you haven't yet started your migration to Android Enterprise, or you have but you'd like some assistance, then this is the workshop for you. We're going to talk a little bit more about why is the admin device admin going device admin API going away. We'll have a look at your environment and find out some of the things that have been challenges for you to see if they've been resolved. We'll talk about what happens if you do nothing. What happens when you get your first Android 9 or Android 10 device and you haven't actually migrated? What will happen to those devices and users? We'll then deep dive further into the Android Enterprise feature set to show you why moving to Android Enterprise is a great move. We'll then go through, one by one, each of the migration best practices, starting with let's do some requirements analysis. Let's look at which devices you've got in your environment. Let's look at uh, what your current versions of Android are. Let's look at which applications you've got. And then we'll step through things like enrollment. Which of those enrollment methods are we going to use? So for example, your corporate owned devices. How many devices are on Android 8 or later that support zero touch? How many of your devices have got NFC? Would that be the right way to do it? Perhaps you'd prefer to use QR code. So we'll look at all those. Device selection is important as well. We have a solution catalog which features all of the devices that are Android Enterprise recommended. You can have a look there and decide, hey, of all the devices I've got in my environment, which ones are compatible with Android Enterprise, which ones do I want to retain, which ones might want to, uh, want to retire. Apps are also very important. It's very important on the day one that you start your project, you have a look at your applications because if you need to remediate any applications before you move to Android Enterprise, best off to start those now. So we'll go through what are the best practices to make sure that all of your applications you're using today that may have been hosted on your VMware server uh, can be moved onto the Google Play. Uh, they meet all of our policies, uh, they're compatible, and they can be deployed uh, during your project. We then look at what you might need to do for your proof of concept, get ready for testing, what are all the different test procedures you should have to make sure you have a successful deployment. And then we look forward to what you might want to consider as a best practice for a production deployment in terms of staging uh, your deployment. We'll also then open up to Q&A. You can answer, uh, ask any of the experts uh, in the session uh, what their advice is based on your, your particular environment. Workshop 2 is designed largely for people that don't have Android today or that have got Android but are only allowing into a BYO environment and perhaps are only allowing certain models of Android. We'll go through this in this uh, uh, session a lot more about the security stuff we mentioned. We talk about how did Gartner actually manage to come up with rating Android so uh, strongly in those 26 of 30 categories. We'll look at things like the Google Pixel and the Samsung and how did they manage to get common criteria. And we'll go through Google strategy. So we have a team called the Android Security and Privacy uh, Strategy Team. And they look at a number of areas around how do they ensure app safety, how do they ensure platform safety, and how do they do security assurance. We'll look at the modern mobile attack surface to give you some ideas of what are we doing to make sure that these, these attack surfaces are addressed. So from a system point of view, we mentioned before about secure hardware and the trust zone and the, and the Titan M chip. We look at what we've done to the OS with SC Linux. We look at all the patching in terms of the 30-day security patches and all the changes we've made to privacy, and particularly around app privacy. We'll look at uh, a bit further about how does Play Protect work and how is that protecting your devices. We'll look at phishing, uh, for example, what we're we doing with the, the Google Chrome browser and our safe browsing technology. End users are also covered. We're looking at like what we can do around two-factor authentication and using the Titan M chip to improve security, and also the investment we've made in spam protection and passwords. We'll also look further at those industry recognitions that we, we mentioned on the previous slide and then open up to Q&A. The third one is a bulk deployment best practices workshop. So if you're looking at deployments and you're not quite sure which of those different modes of management that we mentioned are suitable for you, is it BYO or is it fully managed or which particular use case in fully managed should I use? Which deployment methods are best for me based on my types of devices and my use cases? Uh, how do, if I want zero touch, what do I need to do? Where do I find the list of resellers? How do I get started? What can zero touch do and how does it work? 
or if I'm using Samsung devices, how could I use Knox Mobile Enrollment, which was previously perhaps doing device admin deployments for you? How do I move on to Android Enterprise using Knox Mobile Enrollment using the Workspace ONE console? OEM config is also important because that's going to talk about how do we customize things uh, for a particular manufacturer that gets the best of that manufacturer and the best of Google at once. For example, using Samsung devices with the Knox service plugin or using Zebra devices with the MX mobility settings that allow you to get the best of Android, the best of Samsung or Zebra, and also the best of Workspace ONE all on the one device. So they're the three workshops. You can book in for those. They'll be set up as webinars and you can be able to register for those uh, over the next few weeks. Thank you. If you'd like to download this presentation, please go to our virtual booth uh, and there's a whole range of other links to other resources. Thank you.